Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm starting a new series where I interview different people in different industries. Today I am interviewing Derek. Hi Derek. Hi Jen, how's it going? Good, I'm so glad you were able to join today's interview. Before we get started, did you want to introduce yourself to people that may not know you? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Derek. Uh, I am currently a menswear buyer at a men's lifestyle startup uh, based in New York. I did graduate with an accounting and supply chain double major, where I had some tax internships in college. I then went on to have a full time at a big four firm, but then realized it wasn't the best fit for me. So I transitioned into fashion merchandising at a department store, and then I eventually transitioned into the world that I'm at today at a startup. I asked a few people on Instagram to submit questions to you because I think a lot of people are interested in either transitioning into a different industry or looking into the fashion mm -hmm. industry in general. So thank you everyone for submitting questions. So I guess we can get started with the first question. And it, it is, can you share what your Big Four experience was like? Oh, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> I would say my Big Four experience was really eye-opening on many levels. On one hand, it really helped me learn how to be successful in a professional setting. It really taught me the value of hard work, attention to detail, especially from being an accountant. you got to be really careful with the numbers and details and it really taught me perseverance so really having the fortitude to work late hours if you don't feel like you have the perseverance to really push through busy season it might not be the right industry for you but i think most importantly it really taught me what i really valued in a job really made me realize that i didn't really enjoy working the late hours that was right a part of the culture. A lot of professional services firms, they have what is called utilization, which is the number of billable hours that you have with a client each week. And it ultimately created a culture, at least in the firm that I was working for, where you feel like you needed to overwork yourselves or almost exploit yourself to work as many hours as possible because each week they would post up how utilized you were to the whole entire company. So I didn't really like that culture. I wanted a company that valued less of the time that I was putting in and more of the quality and impact I was making. So that ultimately made me realize that I wanted a culture that was more inclusive, more creative, and valued other things in what I'm doing. And I would say, I mean, of course, at any job, the quality of work that you put out is really important, but I felt like at my experience, it was just a lot of emphasis on the number of hours that you put in. And that felt kind of exploitive for me, mm -hmm. where people almost were conditioned to want to overwork themselves so that they right. can be recognized. And I didn't really like that personally. Exactly. I feel yeah. like definitely working so many hours was sort of glorified in a way. And yeah. I also think that there's a quote by Mark Cuban that says, um, time is the most valuable asset. And so when you're supposed to just continue working like 60 to 70 hours a week, it really takes a lot of time for your personal life. Mm -hmm. And so that was probably something that people should consider when going into the big four. Yeah. For sure. The next question is from CPA Leader. She asks, tips on how to get into one of the big fours. I would say to have some relevant experience. I think experience always helps. So leading up to me applying for my job there, I did have some tax internships under my belt. So that was really useful. Um, really show that you are able to work in a team. Um, when I was in the big four, I worked on multiple clients at once and I had multiple different bosses. So knowing that you can interact and work well with different personalities is really important. And then if you're starting out, I think it would be really important to have some sort of idea of what field you want to go into. Uh, a lot of time in the interview questions, they would ask you, do you want to do audits, tax, or advisory, and why so? So just having 
a clear answer as to which field you want to go into would really help because it would just give them the idea that you have more direction in which industry or which field you want to excel at. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So like doing research beforehand of what interests you instead of going to the interview and saying like, oh, I'm not sure like what I want to do, but Mm -hmm. to kind of figure that out beforehand. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. Uh, and another question from the accounting student asked, did you enjoy working at Big Four? Liked it, but then after I realized the culture and being overworked, I realized that it wasn't for me. So honestly, starting at my six-month mark, I honestly hated waking up for mm-hmm. work every single day. Right. Um, I did stick it through for like two years because I was also in the middle of working through my CPA exam and I wanted to finish it because I was like halfway through. Right. Um, and I wanted to give myself more time to really ruminate and think about the career decision mm-hmm. before I make any switches. So I kind of realized like after the six month mark that I didn't enjoy working at it and it wasn't the culture for me. So, right. Yeah. But then eventually you did pass all of the four parts of the exam. I did. Yeah, I did. And I was ready to leave right away after that. Right. So like, <laughs> even when you put that much work, because the CPA exam is not easy, you were still mm-hmm. willing to like give that part up to go mm-hmm. into the field. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Okay, a next question here is that, do you feel the need to go to Big Four and was it heavily pushed onto you in college? I didn't necessarily feel the need to go, um, but there definitely was the name brand recognition that comes with Big Four. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think when you are in that business school bubble where everyone was kind of striving for the same thing and the idea that those firms would open up a lot of doors for you later on, it definitely was a huge emphasis in trying to um, get a job there. So definitely it was a goal for a lot of people. And I think that hype that surrounded the big four made me want to get it even more. So right. um, it wasn't necessarily pushed on me. It was just kind of like the the hype that was around the company that made me want to really get the job. And then this is a question that a lot of people asked on Instagram. They asked, mm-hmm. what made you want to change your career? So I think I listed, you know, all of the reasons why I, it wasn't a fit for me, um, mm-hmm. but personal, personal perspective in terms of, you know, why I wanted to go into fashion specifically, I've always had an interest in fashion. Um, I didn't realize until my senior year of college that there was a field called fashion merchandising, which combines both fashion and business together. So I felt like it was a really good marriage of the creative aspects that I love and yeah. also the analytical experience that I got from accounting. But I was already, you know, already had my offer for my big four firm by then. And I wanted to give an honest effort with the job that I got first before I made the switch. But then after I realized that it wasn't the right fit for me, I knew that I had to just take the chance because if I didn't give it the chance, I would have never have known if fashion was something that I could actually excel at. So I didn't want to live with that regret. So Mm -hmm. just the idea of wanting to really um, not waste the opportunity for myself made me want to switch because I wanted to really go for it and figure out if it was better than what my current situation was. Right. So you're saying that you were interested in like fashion even before Big Four and that you when you realized you kind of didn't like working at Big Four, you decided to kind of give it a shot. Yeah, and I didn't realize that there were all these fields with the industry. I think whenever I think of fashion, I think of like a designer or stylist. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't know that it was like all this business roles mm-hmm. that were associated with it, which is obviously, you know, fashion is a business. But then after I realized that, it made me think that there were more doors for me. Awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's really good. And then another person asked something you learned from Big Four that carried with you that and helped with your transition to fashion? Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, even though I work in fashion, I'm in Excel every single day um, because I am doing the business side of it. So I've gained a lot of, you know, really 
strong Excel skills um, from accounting that carried through with me when I'm analyzing the business in my current role that a lot of my peers didn't really have the experience. Um, right. I learned how to be really analytical mm -hmm. and pay attention to detail. Um, I had some bosses who were super strict with the quality of the work output that I had. So that in turn made me really made sure that I really excelled in my current role. Uh, one of my bosses back in my big four firm told me that whenever you do something, you have to pretend that the VP or the, the CEO is seeing right. it. So that really carried through with me when I went to my roles in fashion. Um, I think I instilled a lot of hard work and mm. um, attention to detail from my big four experience. Awesome, yeah. It sounds like there are a lot of skills that you were able to kind of gain and then later mm -hmm. be able to use that in your current role. So that's awesome to hear that it wasn't just time like wasted, but there was actually mm -hmm. some value that you got from the experience that before. So that's really 100%. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next question is, what was the transition like from accounting to fashion and how did you get the opportunity? I thought the transition was relatively seamless. Um, it was okay. definitely a little bit challenging at first, but I did try to leverage the skills that I had in accounting and making the transition. So I took little baby steps in fashion to get to where I am today. Mm -hmm. So when I first left the big four firm, I um, joined the merchandising office at a department store. Mm -hmm. And within that office, I was working in the planning department. So it was a lot of financials, a lot of numbers, and not a lot of product yet. So that was still very transferable from accounting. And then once I you know, got promoted there, I slowly moved into more product focused roles until right. I am a buyer. So ultimately knew I wanted to be a buyer, but I took little baby steps from where I was to get to where I am today. I remember mm -hmm. when you were trying to get into the fashion, that was your, one of your goals was to become a buyer, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it wasn't as easy as just applying to the buyer role with no experience. It seems like you kind of had to take different steps and avenues to get to your goal of a buyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then another question from CPA to CEO, did you need to go to school to earn a degree in fashion before switching? And they also want to ask, did you need any prior work experience? I actually didn't go back to school in fashion to switch. Um, a lot of people in the industry actually don't have fashion degrees, which is oh, kind okay. of interesting. We have people who are in business school, art majors, engineers. It's complete, you know, I think a lot of people realize that what they studied for isn't necessarily what they want to do in the long run. <laughs> um, but I, like I mentioned before, I just leveraged my accounting experience to apply to what I wanted to do in fashion. I didn't have any really prior work experience in fashion. I did have some retail experience like in high school or like going into college uh, mm -hmm. where I worked at retail. Right. So I think having any like store experience would be really helpful because it gives you an insight in how people shop and what they look for and what the trends are. But you don't necessarily need any fashion school experience to get into it. That's good to hear that because yeah. I know going back to school can be really expensive. And sometimes yeah. if you're saying that you don't really need to go and go back to school for a certain um, job in fashion, that it is nice to hear that you can just simply try to apply and slowly transition to a new role that you would like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you want to like switch, just make sure that you, like for me, I, when I switched from accounting to fashion, I switched my resumes to list my retail experience up top. So make sure you cater your right. experience and your resume to what you want to apply for. And always just you know network with people that are in the industry. I reached out to people that were currently working in fashion that I knew to kind of get an insight of what, what it's like and how to really best solve myself in order to get a job in it. So using your network, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so another question is, um, what does a typical day look like for you as a buyer in menswear? Or mm -hmm. another question is, what do buyers do? Yeah, this is a really good question. So on a typical day, so on a weekly basis, I am always 
analyzing the business. So on Monday mornings, I look at how selling was the previous week. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at what worked really well for us and what didn't do so well for us. And then I'm always trying to figure out ways to pivot the business to meet reach our sales plans, our margin plans, and all of that. On a seasonal basis, mm -hmm. I am looking at trends. I am looking at one way to see what are the big ideas in fashion. And I would usually go to markets to work with our vendors to buy stuff. So what markets is, I would go to the vendor showrooms. So brand will have their fall 21 collection already created. So I would go to their showrooms, I would look at the pieces, and I would decide which pieces would be a good fit for our store. So if I knew from analyzing the business on a weekly basis that corduroy is a really big trend for us and our customers love it, and I go to the showroom and I see a corduroy collection, I would want to buy that piece for my store. So I would right. leverage what I've learned from analyzing the business and look at what the future trends are, and then go and do the buying and negotiating for the pieces for my store. So it's a really good mix of analytical and the arts. Right. Um, in a job. And mm -hmm. I know that you, throughout your career in um, fashion, like you didn't just focus on menswear too, women's fashion as well. So that's mm -hmm. also something really interesting. Yeah, I think it's really interesting to learn about different businesses. When I first started off at the department store I was working at, mm -hmm. I was in fragrances. So I looked at mm -hmm. colognes and perfume selling and then I switched over to women's shoes. Mm -hmm. And then I eventually went to menswear, which is the majority of my career, I was doing active wear and menswear, then I was doing some street wear. Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing more like outdoor surf skate inspired clothing. Nice. It sounds very mm -hmm. fun what you do. It is um, really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Another question from my CPA study journey. What qualities are needed to work as a fashion buyer and how is it different from public accounting? I think I mentioned this a little bit before, but I think having a good balance of the art and science, left brain, right brain, I think right. that was when I realized it was a good fit for me. Cause I feel like mm -hmm. I am analytical, but I don't want to just do like numbers all day. And I am creative, but I feel like I'm not like the most creative person in the world where I can like design a dress. I feel mm -hmm. like this is a nice little happy medium yeah. for me. Um, so you having the analytical skills to Look at business. Look at a business. See what opportunities there are, and know how to run it. But then also having a taste level, and seeing what looks good, and knowing what um, customers may like and may not like. Um, it's a really nice little happy medium between the art and science. Um, yeah. Having both of those skill sets in the brain, and I would say that's a little different from public accounting because accounting is very black and white. So yeah, um, very much so. I felt like that was the major difference between public accounting. And I also yeah. didn't get to see cute clothes all the time. <laughs> like public <laughs> accounting is the difference. So next question is, on the scale of one to 10, how much did you like accounting versus how much do you like your current role in fashion? So my current role, I would say a 9.5. Oh. Um, and then accounting, I would say like a negative three. Yeah. Okay. Like I like my boyfriend is had like a yeah. tax question mm -hmm. recently for his tax returns, and I'm like, I can't really help you. Like I have blocked that blocked in my brain for for the past like five years, so I have no idea. Yeah. Like, what that is, I even hate doing my own taxes, even though it's a simple individual return. I'm like <laughs> every set tax season, I'm I'm dreading it. Even though it's just one return a year, I just can't. Yeah. Look at for it, sure. So. Yeah. So, and I remember like you texted me before this and you said like, how blunt can I be? And honestly, it's like as honest as possible because on this channel, at least we don't want to give like just one side of like accounting is so great. You know, there are, there are so many different people that have different experiences in accounting and specifically mm -hmm. at Big Four. So yeah. we're glad that you gave your honest rating on accounting. So the next question is, what is a myth or a stereotype that you feel like isn't really true about either the people that are working in fashion or the mm. industry itself? I think there's mm. definitely a stereotype 
that people in fashion are super sassy and catty. I think people instantly think of Devil Wears Prada, you think of Miranda Priestly. Um, I think some of the older generation of people in the industry can be like that from my personal experience. Okay. Um, but for the most part, everyone that I've worked with is super chill, um, super business savvy and super forward thinking. So I've had a really good experience working in the, in the industry personally, and I love the culture that I'm at. Um, it also depends on the company. I know certain fashion houses may be a little bit more old school in terms of what I've just said, in terms of the cattiness. But I mean, for the most part, my personal experience has been really positive, so. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's so hard for people to have that or to find that where they love like the culture and also the people. It's really good to hear that you had like a positive um, experience. The next question is um, regarding technology. So do you mm -hmm. think technology is changing or could change the fashion industry? Oh, and if so, yes. how? 100%. It is changing the industry so much. I think the most basic level with mobile phones and smartphones and, shop and shopping mm -hmm. online, that has changed. People are shopping a lot more online now. So I think last year people shopped 50% more online than they did previously. Wow. Retailers are trying to find ways to engage with the customers more online because of this. Uh, they are just trying to find ways to connect with them using technology. So I'm seeing companies using uh, VR now in the shopping experience. Oh, wow. Um, some brands are who create like, an avatar for you online after you put in your measurements so that when you buy something online, you can kind of see how it fit on your body. Because one of my biggest complaints from shopping online is getting it and then realizing it's not the best fit or it's not what I expected. Right. So they're trying to do that to reduce the number of returns that they get. I know Zara, for example, is implementing in some of the stores where when you put your smartphone up to the clothing, it would show the mod a model wearing it for you right there. So they're trying to create those kind of experiences. They're also trying to create a more seamless online experience with stuff like buying online, pick up in store. So that you can combine both the store and, and online experience. So I think technology is definitely changing the industry and how people shop and the industry is trying to adapt to it as well. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that is a definitely a big um, problem when like shopping online. You don't know like the mm -hmm. sizing and I'm sure not only is it costly, but also to the environment when you're returning things and who knows where that product goes afterwards. So it's really mm -hmm. good to hear that the fashion industry in itself are adapting to the people and mm -hmm. trying to make their shopping experience a lot better. So next question, uh, this question is from City Minimalist. Did you have any concerns or do you have any concerns about the retail businesses after what has happened in 2020 and 2021? I had concerns about the retail business even before. I think oh, wow. the shrinking middle class and the changing shopping habits of millennials have been a detriment. Um, people are sh spending less money and more of their wallets is being spent on experiences because millennials love to spend on experiences more. So that's been pretty challenging. And then the was an even harder blow for us. Mm -hmm. um, but I, th I think that it's going to be a reset. I'm trying to be optimistic about it. Um, it was pretty sad to see some of my favorite specialty stores close. It will just cause, will force the industry to be more adaptive and to think more innovatively for right. the future. So I think companies that have better customer service, more technology infused into the shopping experience will ultimately survive. So I, I'm hoping that this will just be like a nice reset for the industry and it will be better from here on out but it was it was pretty shocking i had a lot of friends in the industry who were furloughed or got laid mm -hmm. off and it's been pretty challenging to be honest to find a job right now in the industry so i feel really lucky that my company is doing well and it's stable and mm -hmm. it's growing so yeah it's definitely a challenging time right now yeah and then another question is what are some of your passions outside of your work 
Um, I love to dance. I am on a dance team outside of work. I actually got into fashion kind of through dancing because something that's really, um, that I really noticed in dancers were their sense of style. And that kind of was a nice merge between both of my interests together. Right. So I love dancing. I'm a part of a dance team. I started in college my freshman year because I wanted to try something new. Um, and I ended up loving it and I've stuck with it. And now I'm a part of a dance company in New York. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been to some of your shows, actually a lot of them, but yeah, yeah. Them. <laughs> <laughs> you are a very good dancer and I'm always so amazed. I feel like the shows get better and better each year. Oh, and Okay, so this is the very last question. Uh, what advice can you give someone who is scared or fearful to change industries? It's definitely scary and I understand how that feels. I would just say, to do your research. I think before I made the switch, I reached out to people who were in the industry. I reached out to my network to see if anyone has any experience with what I was doing. And I asked mm -hmm. them a million questions. I wanted to know what the day-to-day -day was, uh, what the favorite part of the job, and what were the biggest challenges, tips on how to get into it. So I think as I had more information, it made me feel more reassured to know that this was the right move for me. And I would also say to just adopt the mindsets that you only have one life to live. And if you don't go for what you really want to go for, you may end up regretting it. So just make sure that you, you know, capitalize and make the most out of any chance that you can get um, and to just go for it. But ultimately, I think if you're able to network with people in the industry and get more information it will definitely make you feel a lot better nice mm -hmm. yeah i think that's kind of like what actually stops a lot of people from following what they truly love and this mm -hmm. fear you know like over overcoming that i feel like it's the hardest part of because like everyone knows what they love to do but it's like mm -hmm. to getting there is like the difficult part but um, and not being afraid to fail like if something doesn't right. doesn't work out like you'll still be alive it's yeah just don't be afraid to take the chance take the opportunity if you can yeah that's mm -hmm. so true uh so that was the very last question that we had so i just want to thank you so much for joining today on the first episode and if you guys are interested in following Derek, this is his Instagram. I'll also link it in the description box. If you guys enjoyed this interview, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And next week, we'll have another episode out. Uh, I'll be interviewing Nicole P. She's a CFO, and she also worked at Big Four. So thank you again, Derek, for joining today. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And we'll catch you guys later. Bye. 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 and start <laughs> sorry. Hi, Derek. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> <laughs> Should we start again? <laughs> yeah, let's start again.